So today, while getting ready to record the weekly Broken Silicon show, I noticed a headline that, well, that reminded me a lot of some bogus leaks from earlier this year that took on a life of their own. And I wish I would have crushed them immediately, since I knew they had no merit and they caused a lot of confusion. One of those leaks was the idea that Intel was totally going to keep launching more Alchemist desktop cards like the A580. And then there was also that leak about some mythical Alchemist Plus desktop lineup launching in quarter three of this year. Which, by the way, that fake Alchemist Plus leak also claimed the A580 would launch half a year ago. And of course, that has doesn't happen and also of course well it's only seven days till quarter three is over so i don't think i need to dwell on that bogus alchemist plus leak it's obviously all a fake unless you prescribe to the theory that intel's about to launch a full desktop generation out of nowhere a day from now but on the note of the a580 i actually want to drill on that one a little further because i think it's just important just because Intel announces something doesn't mean it's going to come out. They've announced a lot of things that have never come to fruition. And oh, today, a lot of websites are misquoting an interview. And, well, let's just get to it, actually. Let me put on screen what's generating a ton of clickbait today. So someone at Intel simply said that Meteor Lake is coming to desktop in 2024 and then made some vague statements about it being top to bottom in segments. And I just believe this is being entirely misinterpreted. All Intel, if you actually watch the video, has technically confirmed is that there will be some form of Meteor Lake in a product that they call a desktop, which I already leaked a year ago was very possible to happen as some i5 on LGA desktop. And, well, you don't need any sources to know that there will be Meteor Lake NUCs that Intel can call desktop if they want to. But just because Intel calls this NUC on screen a desktop competitor does not mean that's what you, the viewers watching this, were probably expecting when you saw headlines today that said Meteor Lake coming to desktop in 2024. I imagine at least 90% of you saw those headlines and assume Intel had confirmed they had some 8 big core, 16 little core successor to Raptor Lake coming to compete with Zen 5 early. And I'm telling you today, and I have proof of it that I'll show later in the video, that's not what's happening. No. I don't know exactly what they will call it, but calling it a top-to-bottom segment coverage now doesn't mean anything. After all, Intel still calls Alchemist an enthusiast graphics card series. And if you look at the performance... I don't think anyone watching this video would agree it's enthusiast. Yet Intel can call it enthusiast. In Meteor Lake, they can call it a desktop competitor if it's just some BGA thing in a NUC or if it's just an i5 that launches to LGA 1851, like I leaked a year ago they might do, by the way, early. But that's really the only two options. And in all honesty, though, I don't think Michelle in that interview was doing intentional misdirection. I think she just answered that guy's question and didn't know everyone would read into her quote way too far. And, well, actually, before I get to the proof, I just want to briefly outline logically why Launching a full Meteor Lake stack, it, it doesn't make sense on desktop. It just doesn't anymore based on information that is already out there, right? So here's what we know publicly. Meteor Lake launches to laptop late in December 14th of this year. That is practically 2024. And then we also know that Pat has gone on stage and said Arrow Lake's launching after that in late 2024 basically so at some point between the beginning of 2024 to laptop and the end of 2024 where we know they have arrow lake they're supposedly launching a full meteor lake desktop generation even though i've already leaked slides showing that it will be using raptor lake as extreme 14th gen processors in laptop that doesn't make any sense. Why would Intel be working around the clock to launch some sort of proper top-to-bottom Meteor Lake desktop generation if they are already launching Raptor Lake as 14th Gen 24 cores on laptop? If they knew there was some better Meteor Lake coming, 
they would not be bothering with launching Raptor Lake again to laptop. It just doesn't make any sense. The only explanation you could come up with for why this would be happening is that Arrow Lake is getting delayed and they need to do what is really a Meteor Lake refresh to desktop next year. But again, I have proof that's not happening. I spoke with multiple sources today to kill these rumors before they take on a life of their own. And I want to get to that information, but first an ad from a sponsor. Ever get exhausted looking for a safe way to pay reasonable pricing for Microsoft software amongst tons of questionable listings on eBay and shady websites? Well, now you don't have to do this any longer, not if you go to cdkeyoffer.com. This piece of content is brought to you by cdkeyoffer.com and their back to school sale. Whether it's Microsoft operating systems, office products, or even many of the latest AAA games, cdkeyoffer.com provides PC gamers with a product that I honestly think this community does need in a world where far too many of our components that make up our PCs are getting more expensive every year. The last thing we need is monopolistically priced software to remain on that list of stupid stuff we pay too much for and you know the moore's laws dead team has been working with cdkeyoffer.com for many years for a reason they've been good to me they've been good to dan they've been good to family members that use their website when they build a pc and they've been good to the moore's law is dead community as well so whether you're looking for steam ea uplay or playstation keys or of course Microsoft products, support Moore's Law is Dead by using the code BROKENSILICON for 25% off all Microsoft products or die shrink for 3% off everything else. Support us at cdkeyoffer.com today. All right, let's not dilly-dally in this second half of the video. Let me just put this leak on screen right here. Here you go. This is a benchmark of a 6 plus 8 Core Ultra 7 155H Meteor Lake laptop chip scoring around a 7,300. I'm not going to give you the exact number because I think it could harm the source, but uh, it's it's around 7,300 in Cinebench R20 multi-threading. Now, there are two things that should jump at you immediately when you see this Cinebench leak if you're somebody who's used R20 a lot. One of them's good, one of them's bad. Uh, the good news is that this isn't even the top chip. I expect the top chip at same TDPs to be at least 5%, maybe even up to 10% faster than this. So what you're seeing and what I'm talking about today, it will get better than this if you get the flagship model. But yeah, the bad news is that this score isn't even faster than what an existing 6 plus 8 Raptor Lake chip can give you. I'm not talking about 14th gen. I'm talking about 13th gen, not Raptor Lake refresh, just bog standard Raptor Lake. It actually can get better than this with the same core counts already. And in fact, the i9-13900H that I'm comparing the score from on screen here, I looked into it and this model was running around 4 gigahertz at around 100 watts, which is actually pretty close to what the sample I saw benchmarks from today also was consuming, which on that note, let me confirm some more information from the source. And it is one of my best ones I've had for a bit here that provided me with this like put this on screen the source that benchmarked this told me this is a pre-qualification ultra 7 that utilized 6 plus 8 cores no not 6 plus 10 it did not use those two soc cores cinebench did not leverage them and that is how they got that score but while it is not a final qualification sample i do not expect the final version to be more than about five percent faster than this and then I don't expect the flagship to be 5% faster than that. Meaning, well, this isn't final final and things could improve from here. I don't expect more than 10 to 15% better than this thing that already lost to a Raptor Lake sample. Uh, this sample, in fact, was running using 100 watts with desktop cooling, and it fluctuated around 3.8 gigahertz in R20 sustain, and it did spike up to 4.8 gigahertz, which anyone paying attention to recent Meteor Lake leaks will know that this model is supposed to stop at 4.8 gigahertz anyways. So although it's not a final sample, it's hitting the final samples single-threaded top boost clock. So I think it's very close to final. Although I will say that I do expect the relative efficiency 
to improve in the final qualification silicon, right? See, because like I sent these benchmarks to some contacts at Intel and they were like, yeah, this boosting behavior seems typical. This seems pretty close to what the final samples should do. And so I go, well, then the performance probably isn't gonna get much better from here. But this is an atypical test system that is intentionally pushing these CPUs extra hard. It wouldn't surprise me if the boost characteristics I'm telling you about today don't require 100 watts to get there. That, that may be at, I don't know, 28 or 45 watts. This is the performance you will get. At least I hope so, because otherwise what we're seeing here is a Meteor Lake chip that even at same power consumption isn't that much better than Raptor Lake. And I just do not expect that in the actual final silicon limited to 28 watts versus a 28 watt Raptor Lake chip. I expect the efficiency, not necessarily the performance, to improve a lot in the final silicon compared to what I'm leaking today. But yeah, let me throw that leak slide up again because I do want to confirm a few more things. So yeah, in Prime 95, it ran at 4.2 gigahertz at 100 watts in sustained loads. And also, this is something I've been trying to confirm for a while here since these rumors came out. Cinebench did not use those two extra SOC cores. Again, the way Meteor Lake works is it has six big cores, eight little cores, just like Raptor Lake Mobile has, but then it has two more little cores on the SOC die, mostly for idle and background tasks. And yeah, indeed, it's kind of being confirmed to me today that is what they're used for, but it's like kind of, right? So in this Cinebench benchmark, they did not use those extra little cores. But one contact of mine was able to get a test system to use those two little cores in multi-threading apps if they manually told the apps to use them. But it only was in some apps that they could manually force all 16 cores to be used. And a lot of apps would never use them on their own volition. That most of the time when they booted up things, even things that were using a lot of multi-threading, they wouldn't leverage those little cores in the background. You can sometimes physically, but not in all apps. And so I'm forced to conclude that there may be situations where tankerers can force those two little cores to help a multi-threaded workload. But it wouldn't honestly surprise me if eventually in the OS, they just don't really let you take any control over them. And if they do, don't expect to be able to use them in every app. Think of Meteor Lake as a six big core, eight little core chip. Do not think of it as a six big, 10 little core chip. And, uh, you know, it's also worth mentioning, by the way, even if you do leverage those extra little cores, they run at lower clock speeds. They've been tweaked for density and low voltage, and they're using an inferior node. So I'm not even sure how much of a boost you'll get, like 5 10%. I don't even know if it'd be that. Probably wouldn't even be worth messing with them. Uh, but okay, one more thing I want to mention on this leak slide, and that is that I am told, and I double-checked this with multiple sources today after seeing the bogus headlines, Arrow Lake is still on track for the second half of 2024. And so the people I talked to at Intel say there is no need for a full Meteor Lake desktop generation to replace it. But there is, of course, a chance that they will launch 6 plus 8 Meteor Lake to Nux and LGA 1851 i5s before Alder, uh, Arrow Lake launches to desktop. And, you know, I honestly wouldn't hate that. And I have long said for a year now when I leaked that this might happen, that this might not be that bad of a situation or really that bad of an idea. You see, one of the main issues that plagued Intel's Alder Lake launch is that, well, it launched with a new platform that because it required faster shipping to rush those motherboards into stores so you could even bother to run Alder Lake CPUs that jacked up prices and hurt motherboard options and availability. If Intel could launch some Meteor Lake i5 generation half a year before Arrow Lake launches, that means that by the time Arrow Lake launches, you may have tons of motherboard options and those motherboards might not be crazy expensive anymore. That would not be a bad idea. I've always thought, even if Intel cancels the top Meteor Lake chips, which I'm telling you they did, people, despite what you've seen today, that does not mean that they should be afraid to launch some Meteor Lake i5 if it can improve on Raptor Lake decently and give people early access to the next generation of Intel motherboards before Air Lake comes out. I think that's a solid option. Although I do have to say that I also originally hoped that this Meteor Lake i5 desktop generation, if it does come out, 
would come out by the end of this year. But instead, we now know that the laptop generation is practically not even launching until the beginning of 2024, which, based on what I've seen and leaked of Zen 5 roadmaps, tells me it's kind of unlikely that Meteor Lake could launch to LG 1851 on desktop, notably before Zen 5. As usual, Intel is running out of time to launch a product for it to still have any decent relevance. But uh, yeah, you can expect more coverage about these products from this channel later this year and into next year. So please subscribe to the Moore's Laws at YouTube channel and ring the bell button so you don't miss all that upcoming coverage. This is a lot of work as well. You know, responding to bogus stories on a Sunday evening, it does take a lot of time out of my personal life. So please consider supporting the Patreon so you can support independent reporting that aims to actually get things right and dispel bad rumors. And if you do, you'll get access to hundreds of exclusive pieces of content like a die shrink that just came out a couple days ago. It's just another bonus hour of video content going through stuff that patrons get access to for just $2 a month and there's no ads ever. So uh, that's there if you have the extra money. But otherwise, no matter what, thank you for watching. <laughs>